Shadow Home Affairs Minister James Patterson joins me now. James, welcome to the show. Look, we're going to get to Penny Wong and Taiwan and the data hack in a minute. But firstly, I just want to hear your reaction to Cricket South Africa sacking their Jewish captain, David Tiger. Good evening, Shari. Look, it seems very self-evident that this is a case of discrimination and persecution of someone on the basis of their faith, and it is uh, an stain on South Africa cr cricket that they're allowing this to happen. I mean, self-evidently, their explanation makes no sense. If it's for his safety that he has to be removed from the captaincy, how is it safe for him to remain on the team and play at all? If it really is about his safety, surely things are so dangerous he can't even be on the team at all. Seems like he is being punished for his views. And there's a broader and more disturbing point here, Shari, which is that we have, prior to the 7th of October, a big enough problem already with anti-Semitism. Mm. It was bubbling below the surface in many societies. It occasionally came above the surface when incidents occurred. But at the moment, post-7 October, we have a full-blown crisis of anti-Semitism. It is rampant. It is Absolutely. rampant across the Western world and the rest of the world. And political leaders need to take responsibility and lead and deal with this because we know where it ends. We know where it leads. It'll lead mm. to tragic consequences for the Jewish community and for everyone else. And frankly, in Australia, we just haven't seen enough leadership from the Prime Minister about this. He doesn't seem engaged in this problem. He hasn't led on this issue at all. And I think that's a stain on him and his Prime Ministership and his government. He really needs to come back now in the new year with a new resolve and a new determination to tackle this scourge before it becomes an absolute tragedy in our own country. No, I agree with you. I don't think he cares about anti-Semitism and it seems neither does Foreign Minister Penny Wong. I mean, we all still visit Holocaust museums. We go to the sites of concentration camps. But just three months after October 7, she's shamefully refusing to visit the sites of the Hamas massacres. I mean, is this a complete waste of taxpayer funds if Penny Wong is going to Israel but refusing to actually visit the areas on the south where Jews were attacked? Shari, immediately after the 7th of October, the Prime Minister himself should have gone to Israel as our closest allies and partners, including the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, the European Union, Canada and others did. But if he wasn't available, he should have immediately sent Penny Wong to do it. The fact that she is only going now, three months later, and that when she goes, she's not even going to bother to visit the sites of Hamas's atrocities against the Jewish people and the Israeli people, says everything you need to know about this government when it comes to Israel and the Jewish community. It does not stand mm. with Israel. It does not stand with the Jewish community. Penny Wong is going belatedly because she has to, because she's been embarrassed into going, because the shadow foreign minister, Simon Birmingham, led a delegation there in December. But even then, she can't bring herself to do it properly. And it's very clearly that the government is worried about the domestic political implications of that from their pro-Palestinian supporters. She can't be seen to be uh, being too sympathetic to the Jewish people and the Israeli people who died on the 7th of October and mm. has to be seen to be so-called even-handed by meeting with victims of uh, settler violence in the, in the West Bank, which is a serious issue, but nowhere near on par of the mm -hmm. greatest loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust, which is mm -hmm. what happened on the 7th of October. And it's a very uh, disappointing thing from this government. I think they should be ashamed of the way they've conducted themselves on this. Mm. Now, Senator, you've been campaigning on the security implications of TikTok for a while now. You've had a, a win today. Major brands, Mitre 10, Vodafone, Headspace and even Channel 10 have deleted a controversial data tracking tool. Other companies are still sticking with TikTok. What risk does this pose? Well, Shari, over the summer break, it was revealed that TikTok has a practice of installing a pixel, a surveillance tool, on the websites of many of Australia's largest businesses, which harvests the private information of people who visit those websites without their permission. And that's potentially a breach of Australian privacy law, and it's a distinct way that TikTok collects information compared to other social media companies who do similar mm. things. And, of course, TikTok is different from those companies because it's beholden to the Chinese government. So it is very welcome that those companies you listed have stopped using the TikTok pixel. I was disappointed, though, in companies like Woolworths, Kmart and Sportsbet, who say they're going to continue to use it, because right now the Information Commissioner, Commissioner is investigating this for a possible breach of the Privacy Act. This is a serious thing, and those mm. websites shouldn't be aiding a company beholden to a foreign authoritarian government in abusing the privacy of Australians in a, in a mass way. Mm. Look, also a big story today in The Australian by journalist Ellen Wynette. We've learnt that Russia-linked hackers have apparently stolen sensitive data from government agencies, including the Prime Minister's own department, also the Reserve Bank and Australia Post. Look, are our security systems still 
not what they should be? Do you think the federal government still isn't taking cyber security seriously enough? There are two really shocking things about this, Shari. The first is that this happened eight months ago and the government has only now been finally dragged into admitting that 62 government departments and agencies have been affected, including intelligence and security agencies, including the NDIS and other agencies that hold sensitive information. That's a shocking thing. But what's worse is it appears that there's been no policy change since this happened. This is a law firm that was holding sensitive information on behalf of the Australian government. It's something that happens quite often and the government has taken no steps at all to make sure that all of those uh, third parties who hold sensitive information on behalf of the government have sufficient cyber security protections in place to protect them. And so we now have Australians out there who've had their data breach, who may not even been informed about the details of that yet, who are unknowing victims of it, and the government's done nothing to ameliorate this and prevent it from happening again. And mm. uh, once again, we see that Claire O'Neill's been missing in action on cyber security, as she often has been, still on a long summer break, not here uh, on the job dealing with this problem.